Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us, us rejoice and be glad in it. So our church's mission statement is loving God, loving neighbors, and living with purpose. And sometimes loving our neighbors means keeping our distance a little bit. So we're not gathering in person today, but the spirit is still moving in our midst. We are still a church. We are still a community. And this video is just one of many ways we're working on to stay connected during this time of pandemic. So I was thinking today and remembering a time when I was about 27 years old, I think it was about 1996, and my daughter Madeline was really sick. She was a baby and for nine days straight, she got a fever of 104.5 and I was exhausted and the doctor said it was a virus, uh, didn't know much more than that. And I remember on the ninth day I called my mom, I had been calling her a lot. Well, I was living in Los Angeles, my mother was living in Alberta, Canada. And she heard the fatigue and I guess a little bit of despair in my voice and she says, all right, Sandy, I'm gonna call my mom and we'll get the prayer chain going. So she called her mom, my grandma Dorothy, who lived in a little town called Barhead, Alberta. And my grandmother, and you had to use the phone in those days, picked up the phone, activated the prayer chain of the Barhead Alliance Church. And even though I was more than a thousand miles away, I could feel the power of those prayers. And I don't know if it was the nine days or the prayers or what, but Later that day, Madeline's fever broke. But I'll never forget that. I could feel the love and I could feel the prayers even at a distance. And I also started thinking about several stories of Jesus doing remote healing in the Gospels. I love the story from the Gospel of Mark about um, the Syrophoenician woman who approaches Jesus and begs that he would heal her daughter who is possessed by a demon. And Jesus says, the children need to be fed first. It isn't right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. She says, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he says, good answer, go on home. The demon has already left your daughter. When she returned to her house, she found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. There's another story in Luke, the healing of the centurion's servant. This is Luke chapter seven, a, a centurion, a Roman leader, wants healing for his servant who is sick. Jesus heads out to go to the centurion's home and the centurion says, Lord, don't worry about it. I don't deserve to have you come into my home just say the word and I know my servant will be healed. And Jesus is amazed. And by the time the centurion gets home, his servant is healed. And then there's that great story in Luke 17. And I'll just read this since it's short. This is Luke 17 verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 men with skin diseases approached him. Keeping their distance from him, they raised their voices and said, Jesus, Master, show us mercy. When Jesus saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. As they left, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, returned and praised God with a loud voice. And this is that great story about the one who came back to give thanks. But in all these stories, Jesus is healing without touching anybody. And I think that is something that still happens today. And we very much believe in the power of prayer, that even though there's something unique and special about physically gathering, that the spirit is still in our midst now, even though we may not be able to gather in person. And with that, I'd like to invite Pat to start us off in a time of prayer. Yeah, let's do pray. You'll notice that Sandra and I are keeping our six foot distance as is the recommended practice. But as people of faith, we know that the Holy Spirit will fill that gap, not just six feet away, but six miles away. So with that in mind, let us go to prayer. 
Gracious, amazing God, the author and giver of life, you created everything that is. You put the stars in their place, the planets on their rotation, and you placed us here on this earth to live as your people. And we just give you admiration and thanksgiving for who you are and for who we are in you. We pray that you will walk with us uh, through this life journey, especially in this difficult time of worry and fear. We give you thanks for your amazing ways, and we trust that in all things you are working to bring goodness into our lives. Jesus Christ, you took the form of a human and walked among us, showing us what it means to live as faithful people, what it means to live without fear. We take lessons from you, and we, we so admire the, cur- the courage that you, you showed as you were faithful to your calling, and we just pray that we learn from that and that you motivate us, you inspire us to continue to walk our faith journey without fear, without worry, trusting that you are in charge and that all things are well. Holy Spirit, the great comforter, we We call upon you now. We lift up to you so many concerns for the people who have been afflicted with the coronavirus. We we lift them up to you that you would bring swift healing to them. For those who have struggled with the loss of a loved one, we lift them up to you that you would shower them with a peace that surpasses all understanding and that you would let them know that, uh, that your love is with them and that when they cry, you also cry. We lift up the responders to this, this situation for the, the medical doctors, for the hospital workers, for the caregivers in assisted living facilities. We just... We, we lift these healing people up to you and we ask that your spirit would be upon them, that you would give them the gift of healing as they care for the most vulnerable of people in our world. We lift up to you the young children who have had their lives disrupted by the closings of schools and, and daycares and... Um, especially those whose home life is, um, is less than ideal and for whom school and daycare is a bit of a respite. We, we lift them up to you that, uh, that you would give them nourishment, that you would give them comfort, and you would give them the safety and security that, uh, that all children need. We lift up to you the members of this church as we walk through this troubled time, that you would give us the confidence of your presence in our lives. We lift up to you the staff of this church and the leadership as we continue to assess this situation and make decisions that are so important to your ministry. Be with us in all things, Father. We pray these things In the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us this day our daily bread and and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. debtors. And And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. And we lift up you wherever you are, whatever concerns you are carrying today, whatever is weighing you down, your family, your loved ones, and we pray that God is with you in a very real and palpable way all day long. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon you this very moment and forevermore. Amen.